call the meeting to order. This is the 21st regular meeting of the 2009-2010 Common Council, and as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. You see, it's never the environment, it's never the events of our lives, but the meaning we attach to the events, how we interpret them, that shapes who we are today and who we'll become tomorrow. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidem? Here. Here. <laughs> okay. Heidemann? Here. Kath? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Surik? Here. Vanderweel? Excused. Vu? Here. And Wangaman? Here. 15 present. We have a quorum. If uh, Alderman Gisha can please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. We're looking for approval of the minutes of the prior council meeting. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. If there's no discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I have a uh, letter to the mayor dated today uh, from William Nyhus advising that uh, he's resigning from the Senior Activity Center Commission as he's been unable to attend the meetings. Motion to accept and file. Second. We have a motion to accept and file and a second under discussion. There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public forum, Sue. All right. This evening we have three people. First on the list would be Richard Susha. If you could please come up to the mic. Richard, can I have your home address, please? 15 North Point Drive, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'm here on behalf of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance this evening, but they had asked me to make an announcement first that before the primary election, SCTA will be sponsoring a Meet the Candidates Night, February 9th, that's next Tuesday at 6 o'clock, at the Mead Library in the Roka Room. So all the candidates have been invited. Uh, please come and then meet your candidates. I was in attendance at the recent Committee of the Whole meeting where the Fire Department Paramedic Ambulance was discussed with figures thrown around, marginal cost basis was touted, and MBAs were bragged about. And at the end of the evening, most aldermen still had that glazed look in their eyes. They remember one figure, $400,000 profit. That figure is still debatable, but what is not debatable is the terrible collection percentage. I am very happy to see the council going out on bids for a new firm that will not only be a billing agency, but hopefully also a collection agency. The public takeover of the ambulance service was a mistake and remains a mistake. This issue is not going away. You can have all the audits you want and you can have all those figures say what you want them to. Now you want more firemen paramedics, you want to unfreeze the hiring freeze, you threaten to close a station or two with the union head pushing for closure of the downtown station, which would be foolhardy. All this rhetoric is tied in with the ambulance issue. One of the previous chiefs stated, if this doesn't make money, you can take the money out of the fire budget 
and the council and mayor fell for that line. Very few knew what a marginal cost basis was. Now the new chief wants to expand transports because it is a money maker. That's true. But he doesn't feel they should expand service beyond our city limits. He says that now. The system we have where new chiefs stay for about three years to boost their retirement fund makes it very difficult to have any continuity of ideas or management. I know this is a state issue, but our past police chiefs have had more longevity and that is good. While a response time is good, so is Orange Crosses. While there is professionalism, so is their professionalism with Orange Cross. Privatization did and would better serve our citizens. It's not too late to unload this albatross. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Mayor Susha. Yes. I said thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> Next on the list would be Ed Wachowski. Two six three two North Eighth Street. Two six three two North Eighth, and you will have five minutes, sir. I will be very brief, and I won't need five minutes tonight. Okay. First of all, I'd like to thank Alderman Hanna for accepting my letter and referring it to Common Council and having it put on the Committee of the Whole meeting for discussion. I am also requesting this evening that item number twenty one dash fifty. 21-50 is an ordinance change being requested by the Transit Commission also be referred to the Committee of the Whole for discussion, enlightenment, and information that you will receive before you vote on the issue to change the ordinance. To take time and discuss it this evening would be inappropriate in my opinion for two reasons. First of all, I don't think valuable time from the Common Council meeting should be devoted to this type of discussion and more time can be devoted to the discussion at the Committee of the Whole. Also, it will give the Transit Commission, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Transit Director an opportunity to address the issues of why they want this to be done. Both, both issues, 2150 and 2122, are related. And I want to thank you in advance for moving or referring 2150 to the Committee of the Whole for discussion. And I made it under five minutes, did I not, Joe? So? Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. And last on our list would be Dulcie Johnson. <laughs> Dulcie, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Mayor Ryan, aldermen and citizens. I attended the Salaries and Grievances Committee meeting last Monday night. Chief Herman was present to discuss his request for promotions and pay increases for the positions of six fire department retirees and to ask that the council lift the hiring freeze to hire three more firefighter paramedics. Chief Herman wants to expand the ambulance service and provide transports to Milwaukee, Fond du Lac, and Green Bay, and he stated that he cannot do transports without the three new hires. Alderman Heidemann, Kittleson, Bauk, and Geisha voted to lift the hiring freeze. Alderman Kath voted against it. Per tonight's council agenda, the issue is being referred to the Finance Committee to find funds for these potential new hires because they are not funded in the 2010 budget. The mayor and council accomplished a 0% tax increase by eliminating 21 public works positions as well as personnel from other departments and there are four unfilled positions in the police department. Should the fire department be exempt from making sacrifices too? Where will the money come from to amend the 2010 budget and add three new firefighter paramedics? I thought the council had passed a bare bones budget. At Monday night's meeting, Alderman Geisha asked Chief Herman if he would be making the same request if the department was not doing ambulance services. Chief Herman answered yes. You will remember that the city hired four firefighter paramedics specifically 
so the department could provide ambulance service. So I was struggling to understand why the four would be needed if the city was not in the ambulance service business. I emailed Alderman Gisha, hoping he could explain this for me. He responded by saying, good question. I believe I understand the answer to this. However, I feel it only correct and proper procedure that Chief Herman answer this for you in greater detail than I could. So I emailed Chief Herman, who responded that if the city was not providing the ambulance service, we would only need to hire two, because the department was down six due to retirements, and if you take away the four we hired and when we started up the service, we still need two to get back to where we are. <clears throat> also at Monday night's meeting, Chief, Chief Herman said that the department had received an inquiry from a person at Rocky Knoll who would like the department to transport them to Milwaukee, wait while they receive care, and then return them to Rocky Knoll. Chief Herman said this could take six hours, and depending on other demands for ambulance service, might necessitate bringing in on-call persons at overtime wages. Do the citizens of Sheboygan want their firemen paramedics spending six or more hours out of the city transporting people to Milwaukee and paying overtime wages for on-call personnel when Orange Cross is very capable of providing this service? The fire union already feels that they do not have a men, enough men to safely respond to fires. And Sunday morning's fire on 8th Street is a good example of why we should not be sending firefighters out of the city doing transports. There is no need for the city to do transports. Government should not be doing what the private sector can do. Chief Herman also said that the city is considering expanding service into the town of Wilson. When asked how, the answer was, and I do not know who responded, but the answer was annexation. I would, of course, support annexation, but would strongly oppose extending any service without annexation. Chief Herman is also requesting a new pumper truck to replace two vehicles housed at the downtown station. In his email to me this morning, Chief Herman said that if we bought the rescue pumper and did not provide ambulance service, we would not have to hire any more people. But the city would be short six firefighters, and fire protection would be impacted. The cost of this truck is estimated to be $475,000. And although there has not been a single document introduced in any committee or to the council, at Monday night's meeting, Chief Herman said that another fire department has already offered $70,000 for one of the existing vehicles. Evidently, word travels fast between fire departments, and it sounds like a fait accompli, as was the case with another issue involving the fire department. And yes, I am referring to the way the ambulance deal came down in 2007, when the votes were already cast before the public had any knowledge of what was being discussed behind closed doors and before the, council, before the issue reached the council agenda. Finally, I would like to share with you information from the Fire Department Ambulance Service Financial and Activity Report for the first six months of 2009, which I received on January 19th in response to a Freedom of Information Act request. Page five of this report states, by allocating the costs of Sheboygan Fire Department personnel by the number of calls it responds to, the ambulance fund has significantly more costs. The report shows a marginal cost analysis profit of $17,805 for the first six months of 2009. Excuse me, Dulcie, would you like an extra minute? Please. Motion to approve the extra minute. Thank you. Go the ahead. report shows a marginal cost analysis profit of $17,805 for the first six months of 2009 and a deficit of $2,277,170 when prorated with the Sheboygan Fire Department, which includes 68% of the Sheboygan Fire Department general fund personnel costs. This is not my arithmetic, but it's taken directly from the report uh, for the first six months of 2009, which I have right here. Candidates seeking election in April have discovered that the ambulance issue is the issue most often raised by Sheboygan citizens. I urge citizens to speak at the public forum and call or write the mayor and your aldermen. Get involved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dulcie. And that's it. That is all for public forum. Uh, moving on to my favorite part of the evening, the mayor's announcements. It's all our favorite part of the evening. I yeah. know it is. Thank you. Um, 
On behalf of uh, Alderperson Clyunas, the uh, committee of the whole meeting uh, scheduled for this Wednesday, um, February 3rd, will not be held in the council chambers. Uh, it will be held at the uh, North 25th Street Fire Station at 515. And the reason for this is it's uh, regarding firefighting demonstration, which is a heck of a lot easier to do in a fire department than it is here in the council chambers. So that is, uh, that is an announcement. So 515, it is open to the public uh, at the uh, North 25th Street Firehouse. Um, also, uh, all of the aldermen you have on your desk, and uh, I've announced this before, we still have our uh, sister city uh, Esslingen tour coming up May 17th. Through the 29th, we do still have a few spots available. This is open to the general public. I know I'm going. Uh, Alderperson Kittleson is going. I don't know if anybody else from the council is going yet. I believe we still have about a half a dozen spots open uh, for this trip. And uh, if you can bring an extra 30 people, we can get another bus. We'll have 36 open. <laughs> so, uh, no, it'll be, a, it'll be a good time. I get to lead it up, uh, even though, don't worry, I'm not actually organizing it, so it'll, it'll come off without a hitch. Um, one thing I would like to talk about this evening, uh, regardless of how you feel um, about the ambulance service and uh, adding or, or uh, uh, eliminating staff, I'd like to commend the fire department on the job they did uh, this weekend. <laughs> Uh, in the early morning hours of, uh, or late, late night Saturday, early morning hours of Sunday, the downtown fire we had just a block away from here uh, at the uh, Sly's Midtown Saloon building. Um, regardless of how you feel about the staffing of the fire department, uh, I want to commend the, our firefighters for the fine job they did. Uh, this building uh, is very similar in structure and the layout to what the uh, Pizza Man building was in, in Milwaukee. Uh, that building was a total loss. This was limited to the one structure. I understand that it was a very dangerous fire to fight. Uh, we had a couple of firefighters that were in a, a precarious situation. Uh, luckily, everything came out, uh, everybody came out unharmed. And the uh, adjoining structures were saved. That's why, we, that's why we have a fire department, and that's why we, we pay taxes to support our fire department. So regardless of which side you are on on the ambulance issue, I think everybody should uh, be grateful that we do have a professional fire department um, that uh, they could have uh, built, burnt down half a city block and, uh, and they did their job. I'd also like to thank some of the uh, uh, people who helped out. We had the uh, town of Sheboygan came in with their, uh, with their uh, uh, ladder uh, and, and, and assisted. We'd like to thank them. Also, I'd like to thank out some of the uh, establishments that were open at that hour of a, uh, of a Saturday night, uh, namely being uh, uh, the Penn Avenue Pub, Legend Larry's, and GM's, who uh, I guess uh, helped firefighters out by providing hot chocolate and coffee and uh, some food and everything else. And uh, it's good to see that our, uh, our local establishments uh, helped out in the effort. So uh, if you happen to see a firefighter, thank them for the job they do. That's all I have. Thank you, everybody. The consent agenda, President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I've got some questions on three different documents. I'll take number 2110 first. Um, and uh, the question I have on 2110, it, these are, these are uh, documents that came to Public Works that the committee moved to file. And I have a question on number one. And for the people watching, that was uh, a communication from Stevie B's Landscaping LLC regarding his offer of the free tree removal, re, tree removal program in exchange that he receive all wood associated with the removal. I understand from talking to the chairperson of the committee, Alderman, Alderperson Kittleson, that this is, now going, this is now going out for RFP. I'm wondering if besides tree removal, whether the RFPs are going to include stump removal so that this operation could all be done in one day. The tree comes down, the stump comes out. Uh, is that under consideration? 
Alderman Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm, we can certainly put it under consideration. I think uh, uh, Director Bittner, I don't know if he's here this evening, but I do believe uh, he'll be working on, on, on something and, and we'll keep this all in mind as we put a, uh, a proposal together to send that out. Bill, if you'd like to. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Person Kittleson. Thanks. We have uh, our Director of Public Works, Bill Bittner, coming to the front. Um, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, uh, we like to get most of the trees taken down during the winter months. Stump removal is really a yard finishing, seeding, black dirt thing, so it needs to be done after the, the spring thaw. So uh, the, the normal process is try to get the, as many trees as you can during the winter months if we don't have bad snow, and then uh, do all the uh, yard replacements uh, right away in the spring. Thank you, Bill. Alderman Board. Thank you again, Mayor Ryan. And then the second, uh, the second one, uh, and on this one, 2119, I would like a separate vote on this one. Uh, and this one has to do with the uh, proposed ordinance on the smoke detectors. Uh, I've got a couple questions for uh, Alderman Hanna and then possibly Chief Herman. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Hanna, did uh, your committee consider how this ordinance is going to increase compliance of people that have uh, smoke alarms? Uh, to me, this is just another intrusion on, you know, trying to order the public what to do, and I've had several phone calls on it. And I, I'm wondering if, if the approach of educating the public on possibly this type of a smoke detector might be advantageous over some battery-operated ones. Uh, could you just tell me how the discussion went in committee, please? Alderman Hanna. I couldn't agree with you more, Alderman Bourne. And I am recommending uh, that this get referred back to public protection and safety. I think it needs more public input. Um, I spent about eight hours this weekend walking in my district talking to people that are in full compliance with our court ordinance. I feel that this ordinance is really directed at a relatively small percentage of folks uh, that are historically out of compliance. And so my recommendation is for it to go back to public protection and safety. I think we need public input and education. Um, I sent a note today to Chief Herman that I believe this is a matter of educating people that uh, these are state-of-the-art uh, smoke detectors. I know my family's gonna make the choice to use them. I think they're a wonderful device. Uh, but I also think this oversteps our bounds. Uh, so I agree with you completely. Uh, would you like to motion, make a motion to that? I'd effect? like to make a motion to refer 2119 back to public protection and safety for further discussion and to allow for public input. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, under discussion on referring back. Would anybody like to discuss referring this back? Alderman Bowers, just discussion yes. on referring it back to committee. I'm on that committee, and uh, I was definitely in favor of the, uh, the new ordinance. What we have here is people that have fire alarms, but they're removing batteries. With this new ordinance, the batteries cannot be removed. And I received the phone calls too. Not a lot, but I received them. They're all against it. And the reason for it being is cost. What is the cost of a human life? Now, if people are taking batteries out, and not replacing them or leaving them in over the period, that's defeating the purpose. Sooner or later, we have to have this ordinance, and they have five years to implement it. So I, uh, I'm definitely in, in favor of what we passed in the uh, committee. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Uh, any other discussion on referring it back? Do we need a roll call on that? Okay, uh, just on uh, uh, motion to refer this back to committee, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We have Alderman Bowers opposed. Yep. Motion carries. It will be referred back to committee in 2119. Back to public protection and safety. Alderman Wagaman. Uh, thank you. I was going to ask the same thing. Alderman Hanna beat me to it. Okay, very good. <laughs> Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, Mayor Ryan. And then the final one that was on the cons consent agenda was uh, document number 2120. 
And for the people watching, that has to do with reducing the number of required fire code inspections to one per calendar year, so long as the interval between those inspections does not exceed 15 months, recommends that the ordinance be passed. Again, Alderman Hanna, I was wondering if you could uh, enlighten the council and the citizens the, for the rationale be behind this. And also, I may be wrong, but I thought that the that the f uh, doing fire inspections is a is a revenue source for the city. I might be wrong on that. Alderman Hanna, please enlighten us. Well, thank you. Uh, my understanding, all, um, Alderman Bourne and, and, and council members, uh, is that. This will allow the fire inspector to spend more time on those areas that have been identified as problem areas. Uh, they go to the same buildings again and again, and they pass with flying colors. So this just allows him to, to focus more on those buildings that are viewed as, as out of compliance and need more of our attention. And I don't know the answer to your question of whether this is revenue source or not. Chief Herman. Chief Herman, I think we'll address, address the uh, revenue issue. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Very enlightening. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to address the revenue, uh, we do receive approximately $87,000 a year back from the state. It's a 2% dues payback for doing fire inspections. This will not affect that. We will still get the same amount back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Herman. Any other questions regarding the uh, consent agenda? We have Alderman Vu. Thank you, Mayor. Just have a question on, on uh, 2117. Number two, about the rental inspection program. I just would like to, to be clear on that if it's still on the, the if it, this program is still in place or has it been canceled? Uh, 2117, um, these are for... Uh, uh -huh. This is to be filed, the whole thing. Oh, this is to file it. In other words, it, is, it will not be enacted, correct? Correct. Yes. This is just filing the document. In other words, this, this will not be acted on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I refer, please, to document 2118 from Public Works. And this is going to be a happy note. Uh, and I'd like to uh, thank the Public Works Committee, uh, all our city uh, engineers, city development, um, in working. If I could refer, the document has to do with the uh, execution of participation agreement for Eisner Avenue reconstruction project. And that not only required a lot of work by the city, but coordination from our staff with the state, as well as our neighboring partners and the townships. Because Eisner running up on the north side of Sheboygan touches, you know, goes city, town, city, town. It's very confusing border up there. And I wanted to thank the Public Works Committee uh, and uh, in finally getting this rolling. I think the neighbors up in that area would be grateful. It's definitely a project worth doing. Thank you, President Gisha. Okay, if there is no further discussion, uh, we are looking, uh, 2119 has been referred back to public protection and safety. We are looking at passing the consent agenda, which is 21 1 through 2118 and 2120 and 21. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vu, Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Uh, 2122 and 2123 to be referred. Uh, 21, report of officers to 2124 by the city clerk submitting the mayor's proposed table of organization for the city of Sheboygan. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the, uh, the RO be accepted and adopted. We have a motion. Do we have a second? It's an RO. Oh, it's an RO. 
Oh, except in the dot. Except okay. in place on file. Pardon me, except in place on file. I except apologize. Except in place on file. We have a motion and a second under discussion. President Gisha. Thank you. If I could continue the uh, uh, committee, the whole met and gave the task, uh, two pronged task. One is a long term vision uh, from the new, newly rejuvenated uh, uh, government structure committee, and then the um, Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee was looking at a short term, uh, uh, the short term issue that uh, was presented to the Committee of the Whole. Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee met numerous times on the issue uh, because there is some urgency uh, with this. Uh, looked at the, uh, the budget neutral uh, regarding it and the structure. And uh, I believe the Seller and Grievance Committee will also meet on the final job descriptions uh, tomorrow. So uh, a lot of work went into working out the, the kinks in this, and uh, I think it is certainly a, a worthwhile short-term solution. Thank you, President Kisha. Alderman Sirk. Thank you, Mayor. I know a lot of work's been put in this organizational chart. I was hoping that um, before, when this thing is finalized, that uh, the, this council receive a, a complete copy of the job descriptions, and hopefully these job descriptions will contain a, a report of the relationships uh, with, within the, the organization itself, that it shows all the duties that the individuals involved will be having to report to. And I think um, more important the minimum requirements for the candidates, uh, whether we require the municipal experience or private experience, whether we require the person to have an MBA or perhaps have a master's degree in public administration. And lastly, I hope we would include um, uh, the salary ranges and the anticipated starting rate for these positions when they are created. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderman Surik. Uh, the, the job descriptions uh, are presently in salary and grievances. Uh, they have been there. Uh, come, we're having another salary and grievance meeting tomorrow, I believe. President uh, Gisha. If I may thank you, Your Honor. Um, I concur with Alderman Surik, and I can tell him that because I wrote several of them uh, regarding the qualifications portions of it and updated those qualifications. The qualifications came from uh, five specific cities around the state of Wisconsin of similar duties, uh, municipal experience, uh, everything he has to say. And furthermore, the council will have full view of these because it will go to salary grievance tomorrow. And then the council will then have an opportunity to view those before coming back and voting on them and have ample time for input and questions. Thank you, President Gisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, we have a motion on the floor 2124 to accept and file. Roll call, please. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 21, 25 through 35 to be referred. Resolutions introduce three. 2136 by Alderman Gisha authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Aletta G. Holloway, James B. Holloway, and Aletta M. Holloway et al. against the city and authorizing payment for said services. President Gisha. I'd like to ask for suspension of the rules, and I'd be happy to give an explanation. Second. Motion and a second on suspending the rules. Thank you. This is obviously a legal matter that uh, the outside counsel, uh, per the uh, recommendation of our city attorney, uh, has specific uh, uh, experience in, and uh, we were anticipating this uh, coming up, and now apparently it's time and need for that outside counsel to take action on the city's behalf. Thank you, President Gisha. On uh, suspension of the rules, is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Nobody is opposed. Rules are suspended. Your Honor, I move that the uh, resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. And passed. Thank you. Motion and a second to pass the resolution under discussion. There is none. Roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Heideman, Koth, Kittleson, Clayunas, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Surik, Vu, Wankaman, Boren, and Bauk. 
15 ayes. Motion carries, 2137 by Alderperson Kittleson, authorizing the purchasing agent to issue requests for proposals for the purchase of lighting fixtures and related equipment and for the installation of same at City Hall and the Municipal Service Building. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for a... Um, uh, <laughs> a <re> <laughs> motion, me a motion to put the resolution upon its passage, please. <laughs> I have a motion and a second under discussion, Alderperson Kittles. Thank you, Mayor. This is an RFP, as it says, to, uh, to put out a request for proposal uh, to assure that the city receives the goods and services at the lowest cost, of course, and that should satisfy all the requirements for receiving the federal grant money. Um, if there are any further questions about this, uh, Chad Peleshek is here to explain, but uh, I think it's uh, quite uh, self-explanatory here to buy the fixtures uh, for the, this lighting project that will be um, under this federal grant money. Thank you, Alderperson Thank you. Clionis. Any Kittles. discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Yeah, Alderperson Kittleson, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. and Bowers. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 21 38 by Alderpersons Gisha, Hannah, Boren, and Kittleson approving the fiscal year 2010 one year annual action plan for the Community <coughs> Development Block Grant Program submission, also known as CDBG. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think this is the last one of the evening. I'm asking for suspension of the rules. Second. Uh, if there's some explanation or need for suspension besides the timing of getting this report in for the government so that we're eligible for our dollars, I think Paulette Enders is in the audience this evening. Is there any discussion on suspension of the rules? Is anybody opposed to suspension of the rules? Nobody's opposed. The if not, then, uh, Your Honor, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Bowers. If I understand this correctly, this was uh, voted on by the Strategic uh, Committee? Uh, strategic Plan Fiscal Planning Committee, okay. correct. Now, I notice there's a total of 1,043,285, 208,000 goes for administration. Is that to allocate to sending out checks or what? Now, if I can have uh, Director of Development Paulette Enders come up, she will explain it. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. What that essentially is is 15% of the total anticipated dollars that will be coming in, and it covers the cost of staff, uh, materials. Um, there's actually a variety of staff that's included in that. It's uh, fully fund funding several positions <coughs> in addition to some dollars that are paid to um, the city attorney, to building inspection, um, now there's actually a person that's being covered in engineering and mapping all activities that are eligible under planning and administration of the funds. Did that answer your question, Alderman Bowers? Uh, one question I noticed in there, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe 53000 was uh, allocated for the fire department? Transit. 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 Oh, transit. Okay. Now, was that 53000 included in the original budget, or is this something that was added afterwards? No, they went through, um, Transit went through the application project process along with the other uh, public service agencies. So there was a night that we spent approximately three hours going through all of the applications for public service, and that's actually 15% can be allotted to that. That's a maximum, and the administration is 20%, I was incorrect initially. Um, Alderman Bowers, if I may answer that question, yeah. um, the 53000 for transit was figured into transit's budget. Also on that $53,000 for transit, we get $73,000 in matching federal funds. Um, so if we did not authorize the 53000 for transit, uh, we would actually be $126,000 plus in the hole because we would not get the 
the federal matching funds of $73,000, if that answers your question. Uh, some more government accounting. Okay. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's reality. If we did not authorize the money, we would not receive the money from the feds. So unless we can come up with 126,000 bucks out of thin air, that's the way it is. Alderman Rinflesh. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, many years ago when I first saw the community development block grants, I too questioned uh, program administration costs. But as it turns out, it's actually one of those few times that the feds seem to have it right. Uh, because they understand in this case that there's costs involved in actually spending the money that they tried to give to us. And without that, uh, they would give us one point whatever million uh, in funds, but we would have our own cost to spend that money then, our own staff, that would actually cost the taxpayers. So while that percentage seems high to me initially, it actually is the case where they understand that we have staff that will operate on their behalf, the, the giving of the block grant. So uh, I too originally did question that, but it does make sense to me now, and I actually thank them for including that within the budget so that we don't have, our taxpayers don't have to pay for that. Good point, uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, and we have to remember that in Madison, their uh, going rate is 40% for administration, so. Alderman Hanna. Well, thank you. Uh, this is one of the few times that we uh, receive a funded mandate uh, so often we get unfunded mandates, so this is, a, this is actually one where they, they do get it right. I would uh, ask perhaps um, if uh, Ron McDonald could tell us what he uses the 53000 for plus the additional seventy three. I think people should be aware that we're able to add some, some good services. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Does anybody have any additional questions for Paulette Enders? Alderman Vu. Uh, for these alloca allocations, when are they scheduled to be distributed to these agencies? When will the dollars go out to the particular agencies? Yes. Is that what you're asking? What, what typically happens is um, after we submit our annual plan and the federal government has, a time, has time to take a look at it, we've typically been allocated those funds in July and August. This year it was actually September, so it was late. And then what happens after that is we then execute contracts with the particular agencies. So there is a, a lag in time, and it, it essentially has to do with when, how long it takes for the federal government to review our application for that funding. And so the, the agencies, once they're awarded the dollars by the Common Council, that gets submitted to the federal government. They, it then, you know, once we, we get final approval, so they're actually in a little bit of a, 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 a time of limbo between April and when we're funded. That's our, our, our year is actually April 1st until the end of March. But typically they're aware of it and, you know, they're, they're pretty sure that the dollars will be coming in, but they are taking some risk as they operate. Okay. Okay. Um did we want, uh, do you have another question for Director Enders, Alderman Bowers? Yes, I do. Um, the amounts uh, that were indicated for the various organizations, is that set upon by the organizations or by the Strategic Planning Commission? What, what happens is the organizations submit an application for a particular amount of funding that they would like to receive, and then the Strategic Fiscal Planning Commission listened to their presentations and then made a determination on how much they would be funded. And that, some of that, I would say all of it, was also based on need in the community and some of the planning that we had, uh, the fi our five-year consolidated plan for the spending of CDBG funds. Okay, so each organization presented a plan and then the, the members of this commission uh, voted to accept it or adjust it one yes, way or the other. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Um, President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm chairman of the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee and um, I can tell you it was First of all, staff does a tremendous amount of jobs and send a job work rather in sending out these packets to various organizations. You're just seeing the ones that are receiving funds. I don't know how many they sent out. It had to be dozens. Um, 
those that returned them in then became part of the process. We spent roughly three plus hours meeting with each one of these individual groups in which they gave presentations to us. And at that time, and let me tell you, that's pretty depressing. Right, Elderperson Kittleson? Uh, it, it can be, because there are, if you didn't know it before, you knew it after that three hours, there's a tremendous amount of need in this community during the times that we're in now. Our only concern, and I think I can speak for the committee, was we wish we had more money to target these things. The staff puts, verifies all these applications are in place. A representative from each of these organizations speaks to us for about 10 minutes. Uh, prior to that, we set um, a, a basic um, mission statement for the commission um, on what we wanted to accomplish as we went through these. Um, and at the end, it's a matter of, of um, discussion and allocation. Uh, I can tell you most groups received less. I think we have less money this year to give out than other years. Um, and uh, it's, I'll tell you, it's no fun doing that particular job. Staff does a tremendous job in making it as easy as possible, but you come away rather depressed. But at the same time, you're a little uplifted because you're going to try to help in a few ways, but there's many people we turned away. And I wish we didn't have to, but the dollars are only so many dollars. It's a difficult task. And it's comprised of the five members, uh, the five chairmen of all, or the, each standing committee. So there's five people plus staff. And uh, if anybody's interested in, in joining that process or at least sitting in, any alderman was welcome to be there. Thank you, President Gisha. Uh, being present at that meeting, I, I, I concur 100%. Um, it's a, it was a very uh, um, thought-provoking process, to say the least, and I think everybody came out of this uh, feeling a lot more like the Grinch than the Santa Claus. So it was, uh, it was definitely an eye-opening experience at the, uh, the amount of uh, requests and need out there in the community. Any other questions for Director Enders? If we can uh, have... Uh, Ron McDonald, Director of Transit, come up and explain what those transit dollars are exactly used for. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. <coughs> Thank you, Your Honor and Council. Uh, the block grant money is used by Sheboygan Transit to provide our evening and Saturday <laughs> bus service. Uh, one of the criteria or the, the major criteria for the block grants is to benefit low to moderate income individuals. And what we found out is about 90, 89 and a half percent of our ridership uh, fulfills the low to moderate income ratio. And uh, uh, with, without this service, they can't get uh, or can't meet their most basic needs, whether it's getting to medical appointments, to gain nutrition, to get to employment. Uh, as I said, one of their most basic needs. And I think this is the seventh or eighth year we've participated in the block grant program. And, and without it, we wouldn't have evening or, or uh, daytime service. And really what it boils down to is, is uh, transportation being viewed at as one of their most basic needs. Uh, they can't participate in many of the other programs that are available to them, including going to work. Uh, if we don't provide transportation. And we're really trying to allow these individuals to remain independent and, and, and work for whatever jobs they can find, uh, rather than becoming dependent uh, on the citizens. And, um, you know, I, I guess another thing that I'd like to mention is uh, we've also found there's, there's been studies done that says every uh, $1 we invest locally in transit, we receive about $3 in socioeconomic benefit by keeping these individuals independent. And uh, I also want to expand on the, the funding. Uh, we are hoping to receive $53,000. And uh, our request last year was for 63000 and we were bumped down to $53,000. Uh, we are able to uh, receive an additional uh, approximately $73,000 to, to leverage to the uh, federal and state government to help us with that program. So if we don't receive the $53,000, we'll be out about over $120,000 in our budget. So that's kind of the basics of it. I don't know if anybody has any questions. It's good math, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if there is no uh, further discussion, if I can remember where this conversation started here, um, I believe we are on the CDBG 21-38, 
Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Yes, Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Yes, Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Decker? Let's see, we've got two abstentions and we have 13 ayes. Motion carries. 21-39 uh, and 40 lie over. 21-41 to be referred. We are going to hold 21-42 for 21-44 reports of committee six we're talking here. We have 2143 by law and licensing recommending de denying beverage operators license number 2630 based upon failure to include all relevant convictions on the application, his status as an habitual law violator, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move <laughs> that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, Mayor, is Andrew Lake is here tonight? He's not here, Mayor. Please continue. Uh, Mr. Lake has had two opportunities to appear before the committee, one on January 12th and then by certified mail on January 26th. And uh, he uh, didn't show up for either meeting. So based on the lack of cooperation and uh, his revelant, revelant convictions, the committee uh, voted unanimously not to grant the license. Thank you. Any further discussion? If there's no discussion. Roll call, please. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Now we have 2142 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a memorandum from the wastewater superintendent regarding the amendment to the engineering agreement for digester mixing and solids thickening improvements and approving the amendment. And we have 2144 by Public Works recommending entering into a contract for digestions and solids thickening improvements to the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would ask for a motion to accept and adopt resolution 21-42. We have a motion in a second to accept and adopt. Okay, and then I would ask for a motion to recommend that the report of officer 21-44 be accepted and adopted and that we pass the substitute resolution. Second. And a motion and a second. Under discussion. Under discussion, um, bids for the improvements and the equipment to assure continued proper operations at our wastewater treatment facility. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Thank Any you. further discussion? If there is none, roll call please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Kleunis, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Surik, Vu, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. De Powers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. and Hannah. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 8, 21-45 uh, regarding the same issue. President Gisha. Uh, as it is a duplicate dual referral, I make a motion to file item 2145. Second. Motion and a second to file because it is a duplicate. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 21-46 by finance recommending executing a contract with the state of Wisconsin to provide weights and measures inspections for the period January 1, 2010 through June 30, 2010 at $11,000 and for the period July 1, 2010 through June 30, 2011 at a rate of $22,000. President Gisha. Thank you. We kind of have the same situation here, only a little bit in reverse because uh, 47, 2147 will be a duplicate of this. So I move uh, to um, uh, 
the, uh, the, the report of committee be accepted and adopted and that the resolutions, as there's two, be put upon its passage and we then file 2147. Second. The motion to uh, pass 2146, one and two, and file 2147. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Pass. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunas. Montemayor. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. And Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. <coughs> Okay, we are on to 2148. 2148 to be referred. Uh, report you of committee it. nine. You've got a light. Oh, I've got a light. Alderman Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think this is a, an opportunity. I'm opposed to going into the transportation business. I think the fire we saw the other night was evidence that we need all the firemen that we have in town uh, focused on that job. I'm calling for the Finance Committee to do a thorough examination of the appropriate staffing for the rigs in the city uh, and, to, and to come back to us um, so that we know, uh, is our city safe? Do we have the appropriate number of firemen? Um, and I just wanted to go on record that that part of this uh, study is, is critical to me, and I don't think it's uh, the time to be looking at transportation that could take firemen that are very much needed, like Saturday night, away from the city. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Any further discussion on this issue? What the heck? Uh, President Gisha. <laughs> What the heck? That's what we're here for, right? I appreciate the words of, uh, of Alderman Hanna, and I can tell you that that's exactly what the Finance Committee is going to do. Uh, we're going to look at those levels, um, as we have looked at all levels. Uh, there was some discussion here this evening that, uh, oh, I thought we had a bare bones budget, and where's the money going to come from? Well, if you're part of the process and you do your homework, it's really easy, and it call to the Finance Department. We'll tell you that um, the money for these three firemen, first of all, are, is in the budget. Doesn't necessarily have to be in the fire department's budget. When, at, in December, when some final change arounds were done in the budget, some people out of here, inspectors, all sorts of stuff. Originally at that time, there were gonna be six firefighters rehired because there were six firefighters retiring. It went down to three. So the staffing level was approved via the budget process. The funds just didn't get moved via the transfer process. So I get a little concerned when people throw around ridiculous things uh, to incite rather than to inform. And I think that's what our job is to do here, is to inform with facts rather than, than uh, cause negative public discord with falsehoods. So with that being said, I agree with you. And I, and I can tell you that the, the Finance Department will do such. As such, we will not have a meeting on Monday. Uh, we'll give the uh, uh, Fire Department time to prepare their uh, presentation. Chief Herman did an excellent presentation at the Se Salary and Grievance Committee. Mm -hmm. It was phenomenal. I thought it explained things very well. Uh, explained the uh, staffing levels and the coordination between ambulance folks. People seem to think that ambulance folks just ride an ambulance. That's not true. Those same ambulance people were pulling hoses at Sly's restaurant in the middle of the cold and freezing. So um, it's time that a little, not only clarity, but honesty enters this debate, and I think the Finance Committee will take it upon itself to do just that. Thank you, President Gisha. If there is no further discussion, 2148 will be referred to Finance. Report of Committee number 9, 2149, by Public Protection and Safety, recommending amending portions of Chapter 138-12 of the Municipal Code relating to establishment of new fees for weighing and measuring device licenses issued by the Building Inspecting Division of the City of Sheboygan. Public Protection and Safety, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and placed on file and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. 
We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Zurich? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance introduced 10. 21-50 by Alder Persons Kittleson, Hannah, and Gesher repealing and recreating section 2-5. Oh, I That's take that you. back. That lies over anyway. <laughs> However, we do have people beeping in, so I might as well finish reading it. Section 2-563 of the Municipal Code relating to fiscal control of transit commission expenditures so as to conform with current practices. We have Alderman Baum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, because this is connected to the spirit of document 2122, which is a referral back to the Committee of the Whole, I would move that this document not lie over, but that it be forwarded to the Committee of the Whole for the same discussion that 2122 will be part of. And I'll second that. Okay, uh, the Committee of the Whole, I believe the other one is also going to transit. Yes. Then I would refer back to both. We have a motion and a second to refer this to transit and the Committee of the Whole. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, all in favor of referring, say aye. 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 Opposed? It is referred. Matters laid over 11. 20-42, resolution number 171-09-10. By Alderpersons Gishaborn, Heidemann, Kleinus, and Montemayor, rescinding 2009 real estate taxes for assessment number. Five nine two eight one two one one three seven four. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, just, Your Honor, so everybody knows, this is just um, making a correction in the real estate tax bills that went out. Uh, you do that sometimes at the end of the year. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, President Kisha. Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryan. Alderman Gisha, wasn't this that uh, the one that was a church that was built in air? Was that the one? Because I know I got an email. I got an email from somebody on this wanting to know why we were sending the taxes. Well, it was a church, and churches are exempt from property taxes, and that's why. You are correct. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Zurich. Aye. Vu. Aye. Wangaman, Boren, Aye. Bauk, Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Klingonis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 20-43, resolution number 172-09-10, by Alder Persons, Gisha, Boren, Heidemann, Klingonis, and Montemayor, authorizing the use of contingency funds for appraisal services. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion to second under discussion. Just so I want everyone's aware, these uh, funds, as it says, come out of our contingency, which isn't real large. And I would hope we are very careful about considering using that uh, quite often through the year. But this would be for um, uh, the appraisal of our engineering building across the street. Thank you, President Gisha. We have Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree the, the contingency fund is awfully small, um, and I'm actually not quite sure why we have the need to take out $2,100 of that. If we are interested in selling the building, let's list it, and we'll pay off the listing, the, the fee. Uh, as it is, if we get appraisal, we decide to sell it and list it, we'll still have to pay the commission and the appraisal fee. Uh, so I would just rather just go ahead, and if we want to sell it, let's list it, and I'll vote no on this, uh, on funding the $2,100. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. We have President Gisha once again. Uh, I think it's an excellent question. Normally in the real estate process, you establish it based on market value, but, uh, but in, in residential, in commercial, you very often have an appraisal done ahead of time so you can set the price. Perhaps someone from building use, which I believe this sprung from, um, I don't remember which alderman's on it, I apologize, uh, could probably uh, fill us in on what their thinking was. Very good. Uh, thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Bowers? 
Couldn't we have the city assessor establish the value because he's the one who establishes values uh, in the city to begin with? Um, this is an appraisal, not an assessment. Uh, I understand that, but uh, in making the assessment, you take different values, we can cost approach, income approach, and things like that. So if we have an appraisal and he comes in uh, and the billing, whatever it sells for, is probably going to be the assessment. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Uh, as they say, ask a realtor. <laughs> Alderperson Kaff. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. I sit on the Building Use Committee, and it's my understanding that we are not hiring a realtor, and uh, we do need an appraisal, someone who's versed in commercial, real, or commercial appraisals. And Paulette, maybe it would be a good time to uh, call her. Um, thank you, Alderperson Kaff. Um, being a an individual who has bought and sold commercial property in the past, I've never tried to buy nor sell a property without an appraisal. I think a proper appraisal is very important for uh, listing a property for what you want to get out of it and not, uh, not, number one, listing it for more than it's worth and having it sit on the market until it rots, or even worse, listing it for significantly less than what it's worth and missing an opportunity to, uh, to maximize uh, what uh, you can get out of a property. That's my own personal opinion. Alderman Sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I'm chairman of the Building Use Committee, and we had a long discussion regarding the engineering building there. And, and the committee came up with the idea, I think I believe you were there too, that the first step would be to, you know, we, we want to make certain that we're getting our money's worth in terms of the building and, and what its use would be, and that first step would actually have to be an appraisal. So thank you. Very good. Thank you, Alderman Sir. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Rinfleisch. No. Sirk? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. <coughs> Motion carries. 20-44, resolution number 173-09-10 by Alderpersons Gisha, Boren, Heidemann, Clyunis, and Montemayor, establishing a deferred compensation plan with Nationwide, nationwide Retirement Solutions. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second <laughs> under discussion. Thank you. I believe this came out of contract negotiations. Uh, this was a... Uh, additional option that uh, one of our bargaining units wish to have. There's no cost to the city. This is just authorizing the opening up of a relationship with them in case those individuals wish to use them as their provider for deferred comp holdings. Great. Thank you, President Kisha. Uh, Attorney McLean would like to weigh in. I, I would just make a suggestion that there be an amendment on the uh, hereby resolve that the council meeting in regular scheduled session says the 18th day of January 2010. Uh, that's when the document was brought in, but you're adopting it February 1. So moved. Uh, second. 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 Motion and a second on the amendment. And we are going to put, uh, put it upon its... I move that the resolution as amended be put upon the passage. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage as amended by <coughs> the suggestion of Attorney McLean. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Sirk? Aye. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Clyunis, Aye. Montemayor, <coughs> I'm sorry, Aye. thank you, and Rinfleisch, 15 ayes. Motion carries, 20-45, resolution number 174-09-10 by Alderman Wangerman, designating certain sites within, within the city of Sheboygan as historic sites. Alderman Wangerman. <coughs> thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, this goes back quite a few years, actually, because uh, for a long time, the city of Sheboygan had no really set plans for res uh, preserving buildings. As everyone knows, we've lost a lot of buildings downtown that 
probably we shouldn't have lost. And uh, some years ago, we received a grant to do a survey of the city. And the city was surveyed from one side to the other. And over the years, we worked on, on this survey and we developed a, a list of buildings. And the way it works is if your home, for instance, is designated or we in, a, attempt to designate it as a historic building, the owner, of course, has full input. Uh, neighbors 100 feet on either side of the building are notified. A public hearing is held. And this was done with the six properties that are listed here. No objections were received. And so uh, hopefully this resolution will be passed and we can continue on and continue to uh, conserve what's so valuable to Sheboygan and that's her uh, real estate, or I should say historic past of her buildings. As a uh, person that uh, served on the Historic Preservation Committee for two or three years, I agree 100%. And uh, one thing that uh, Alderman Wagaman did not say is that when your home is uh, designated, you receive a very cool brass plaque <laughs> to put on the front of it. Thank you, Alderman Wagaman. Alderman Bout. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I just wanted to thank publicly Alderman uh, uh, Wangaman and you, Mr. Mayor, for your previous time on that committee. You designated a lot of great buildings. I know for some owners they worry about, does this mean the city is going to tell me what color i got to paint my porch and stuff? It's not that at all. It's about protecting these buildings and making sure that they're treated with the respect uh, they're due due to their historic potential historic value to the city. And I appreciate his work in this effort. Thank you, Alderman Bob. Any further questions? If there is none, roll call, please. Vu? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Born? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Zurich? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 20 60, general ordinance number. 50-09-10 by Alderman Gisha, obligating the city to pay all taxes required by law to be paid by the finance director slash treasurer to the county treasurer, President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Your Honor, uh, this is uh, somewhat of a mop-up item in compliance with state statute 7067. Uh, having to do with bonding and and uh, basically guaranteeing specific payments to make its way back to the specific governmental body that it's intended to get to. Is that accurate, Steve? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> and this is something we haven't done and hasn't been requested to do for yeah. the last 20 years, but uh, somebody caught it at the county and said we should be doing this. And uh, so this, this document, uh, it, you've got two options. One is to purchase a bond the other is to uh, have the city guarantee basically the payments of the taxes that the city collects to the county. And that's what you're doing here is to avoiding having to buy the bond and just obligating the city to make sure that the payments get made to the county. Thank you, Attorney McLean and President Gisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers, Aye. Decker, Aye. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Koth, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Surik, and Vu. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 20-62, general ordinance number 51-09-10 by Alderpersons Heidemann, Kittleson, Bout, Gisha, and Koth, establishing the salary for the police chief. Vice President yeah. Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Under discussion? Okay, this, uh, this ordinance came out of salary and grievance. So it, was a number, it was quite a bit of discussion. Um, and I'm also going to need a motion to amend this document. I motion to amend this ordinance, general ordinance. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you know, your amend, amendment is? Uh, my amendment is uh, we have to remove section, part of section one, notwithstanding the provisions of the city compensation program for non-representative employees, subsection general ordinance uh, number 141, 97, 98, as amended. We don't have a pay plan for the non-bargaining non reps. Okay. 
Uh, do we have a second on the amendment? Second. We have a motion and a second on the amendment, and that is to. <coughs> it's, it's to just take out the section in section one, that first part of the sentence, notwithstanding, all the way through, amended. <clears throat> that refers to the paid plan. Okay, so we're the uh, first so line after section one, with starting with notwithstanding, all the way through, through the second line, and amended. to as amended. Mm -hmm. So we'll read section one, the starting salary for the position of police chief effective right. January 19th. Right. Thank you. We need to vote on that. Uh, we have a, a, uh, a motion and a second on the second amendment. Uh, discussion on the amendment only. Amendment, amendment. Okay, on the amendment only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The document is amended. Um, now if we can have a motion to put uh, um, upon its passage. Motion to put the, the, uh, the amended resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to pass the amended general ordinance under discussion. Alderman Bourne. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I'm not going to be supporting either 2062 or 2063 tonight. <clears throat> uh, I actually I support part of it and support another part I don't support. Uh, first of all, I don't really have a problem with the salary for the police chief. In fact, with the fact that he's very shortly going to have his master's degree, I wouldn't even have a problem of bumping up that 99910 to his starting salary. The, pro the problem with this document that I, ha that I do have a problem with is that uh, is the 12 percent raise, which would, a, which would be a 12 percent raise if we did part of the raise on July 1st instead of right away. But uh, I have a problem with a 9 percent raise without any performance goals by the department tied to those, tied to those raises. Uh, we, uh, we recently, uh, well, first of all, our non-represented employees that work for the city have not gotten a raise in two years. We just went through negotiating with all of our unions for a pay freeze in 2010. We've also laid off, I think, over 20 people in public works and other employees. Uh, I, I, just, uh, I just can't support giving these kind of raises in this type of uh, economic climate. Uh, I was going to make a motion. I was going to make a motion to go ahead and pass the starting salaries, and and send the uh, the additional raises back to salary and grievances. But I'm not going to make that motion, because I think we would be reneging on promises that we made to the to both the police chief and the fire chief. But uh, uh, again, I don't have a problem with the starting salaries, but I cannot support the raises in this economic climate and based on what our other city employees have given up and are going to give up. So therefore, I will not be supporting either document tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. We next have flashing President Gisha. Thank you. The police chief, and by the way, it's the same 12% with the fire chief, aren't getting 12% raises. Uh, they should be starting based on what police and fire chiefs are paid all over the state. We aren't high, we aren't low, we're right in the middle. The research was done by the Human Resources Department. At the end of the day, our police chief and fire chief will be making less than their predecessors at the end of this deal. The 12% step, as you're seeing, that you have in front of you, is a benefit to the city because of those budget issues. We should be paying them 109, 101 today, because that's what police chiefs are getting paid in cities of 50,000 across the state of Wisconsin. Actually, that's the middle range. It's middle to low. It's not the high. So what you're seeing here is a, is a budget benefit to the city to take some time and step the individual into those, those, uh, those additional wages. So this is a, a positive for the city. You can say, oh, he's getting a 12% increase. If somebody would have came in here and said, we're paying him 109, 101, Nobody would, have, nobody would have griped, but instead we're getting some benefits starting them off at 97 and moving to 109. I find it actually even a little unseemly that we're talking about this in this manner, but I understand. I think it's fair um, and certainly appropriate, but I find it difficult personally. Um, the process for measurables is pretty interesting. Um, we had a lot of discussion of that in salary and grievance. First, 
The police and fire chief report to the mayor. That's our ordinance. The mayor sets goals and objectives for the police and firemen. We don't have any right to hire, fire, or discipline police and fire chiefs in the city of Sheboygan. The mayor does, salary, or, uh, does reviews. In the past, our police and fire chiefs, or anybody else in these areas, received not only increases like you're seeing here, but they also received non-rep increases, when we were giving non-rep increases, of about 3% per year. We ended that process. We built those percentages into this rather than the double whammy and double dip for budget purposes. So let's, let's just walk through a measurable. Let's say we want the police chief to have 20% or 20 percent more uh, burglary cases cleared. But if murder's up 50%, did he do his job if he cleared the 20%? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You fire the mayor and you fire the common council if we're not doing our job and holding our department heads with the feet to the fire. That's the way it works. So to say they're getting a 12% raise, it's, it's, it's not accurate. Uh, it, it's accurate if you're looking at the paper, but if you look at what's actually going on, that we are starting lower and ranging into an area where we probably should be starting to begin with. I think people are a little touchy with the, oh, look at it, it's 12% for both all the way up. But that's a benefit to the city. It's a budgetary, not favor, I'd say accommodation to the city. So the, the, of police and fire chiefs, out of the whole, everybody in the city, every employee of the city, it's probably the least measurable jobs you can put measurements on. I haven't heard one person come up with any measurements. We had discussions about it at the Salary and Grievance Committee. Nobody came up with any measurement ideas because you can't. 20% less fires, 30% more education, 10% uh, less murders, what do you do? That's why by ordinance they report to the mayor and he makes those judgment calls and determines. And by the way, we can't can them even if they were horrible. <laughs> That's the truth. They're not gonna be horrible. They're gonna be great officers and the great representatives of the city. I have every faith in that. But please don't look at it that they're gonna get 12% raise. They're taking less upfront and growing into it as a budget accommodation to the citizens of Sheboygan. Uh, thank you, President Gisha. I, I do agree. I mean, we have professionals that have been, uh, have been uh, uh, hired uh, by our Police and Fire Commission uh, to perform these duties. Uh, both of these salaries, when they are at the end of their raises, are below their predecessors. They're below their predecessors. We have to remember that. Uh, they accepted these positions based upon these pay ranges. Now, of course, the council can go, no, you're not getting any raises. Um, however, if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, the chief of police sitting back here that is ready to uproot my family from Milwaukee and move them up here, I would think twice about taking that job. Thank you, President Gisha. Alderman Surik. Thank you, Mayor. I, mean, I don't disagree with probably both these arguments here. The problem I have with this, but I will vote for it, is that we, if we did have a pay plan existing, this is a severe violation of the pay plan. Um, in the past, before an offer was extended to anyone, I don't care, any department head, it was cleared through salary agreements at certain levels and, and came to the common council. In this case here, we have two individuals that have been offered the position, have actually been sworn into the position, and now we're talking about their salaries. I think it's a poor way this was handled. And I agree. Thank you, Alderman Sir. Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think, I think there's very definite ways that you can come up with performance goals and uh, for both the fire and police department. Uh, uh, I know Alderman Balk uh, at, in salary and grievances uh, had the same concern I did as performance goals. I don't know if he wants to expound <coughs> on it or can do a better job of expounding on it than I do, but I know in the private sector you can call them raises or you can't call them raises, but you're not going to get these, uh, these kind of increases without, without having to uh, meet some standards for, for your particular job. So again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, I, can't, I just simply I can't, uh, I can't support these kinds of increases, uh, even if even at the end of the day they're going to be less than their predecessors. That's the way it should be. They should be their, raise, their raises should be based on individuals, not what's been done in the past or what the previous chiefs got. And I think the Salary and Grievance Committee 
uh, missed a, a great opportunity before the salaries were approved to, uh, to probably prolong this another meeting with more discussion and come up with some performance goals for both of these individuals. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Boren. And uh, um, no, I, I believe this is a, a very civil and uh, uh, very civil discussion here. And, uh, and I also believe in performance goals. Uh, earlier in the evening, we, uh, we all, or you all, voted to uh, pass this table of organization. Uh, in this table of organization, there is something called the Director of Operations. Uh, the Director of Operations is uh, one of his major tasks is going to be uh, measurements, how to measure performance, how to set goals. Um, right now, we don't have those in the city, and not many municipalities do. Unfortunately, private sector has them all the time. Uh, in order to have performance measurements, first of all, you have to have a baseline you're working off. Right now, we don't have that. We don't have that baseline. Uh, one thing I can assure you is that all of our department heads um, and all of our, our workers in the city in general will have performance goals in the future. Now, will they be tied directly to salary increases? Um, that is to be seen, but I can guarantee you that every department head and every employee of the city will have performance goals in the future to, in the future to meet. And if that is any concession, um, I don't believe that in two weeks period you can prolong something and all of a sudden come up with a, a baseline of measurement and here's what we're going to be measuring. It's, it's a bit more complicated than that. So that's, uh, but I can, I can guarantee you there will be uh, uh, performance measurements built into our uh, into our operations of the city in the future. Thank you, Alderman Board. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. This entire process <clears throat> uh, disturbs me because <clears throat> I attended salary and grievances, and I saw the discussion that went on, and I asked the question: Don't we get a chance as a council to vote on this? And I was under the impression that we weren't by uh, Alderman Gishup, but I guess I mi he misunderstood my question. The process is backwards. You people in salary and grievance almost told the police chief and the fire chief, this is the money you're getting. Now we're asked to approve it. What happens if we don't, we go back? Well, we're, our backs are against the wall as a council. We should have been brought in in this process before, and I guess, uh, it hasn't been done that way or it can't be done, I don't understand. After salary and grievance, I would think that you would come to the council and say this is what we proposed, not after these people have been sworn in. Now, if we don't approve it tonight, what happens? Do we unswear these people? Where do we go? Would someone... Uh, uh, if this was not approved this evening, this would go back to salary and grievances. Oh, oh, but they remain sworn in. Yes, I would believe huh? they would. Right? Unless they decided to resign. All right. Yes. So do you see where I'm coming from, being the first year in the council? Now we're up against the wall. If we don't approve it, we got a dilemma in our hands. Mm -hmm. So why not somehow can it be amended or brought into like a committee of the whole meeting where this is discussed and then we approve it and then everybody knows what's going on? Um, Committee of the Whole um, does not actually, uh, Committee of the Whole only makes recommendations. Right, but um, at least everyone on the council is, would this know. This has already been passed by salary and grievances. That's right. This has been passed by salary and grievances and brought forth to the Common Council right. for a vote. Isn't this kind of backwards? Uh, the backwards part of it was the swearing in before the vote by the Common Council on the salaries. Is this normal? Sue? Don't get me in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, is you know, police and fire are kind of anomalies in the, in the whole system. And, uh, well, just so can we unanomalize these people? No. Is there, no, no you nothing can't. can be done? No, you can't un unanomalize them because they are both uh, uh, controlled by the Police and Fire Commission. They are hired by the Police and Fire Commission. Um, what we get, what we get is uh, the mayor and the council. Is we get the individual that we then discuss the uh, discuss the, the <coughs> salary salaries with uh, with our HR director uh, goes to salary and grievances. Um, 
you know, on the whole swearing in process. Um, there, there were a couple of factors that figured into this. We had the fire chief where we had our, our, our former fire chief retired. Uh, and that is why the fire chief, new fire chief, was sworn in, who was appointed by the PFC. Uh, on our police chief, we had a, an interesting situation because we had an interim police chief who was a former lieutenant who applied for the position of police chief and then was not selected by the police and fire commission even though he was interim police chief for a year. Um, when you're boss for a year, and then are, you are moved into a position um, of being a lame duck and knowing that you will be under uh, ranked, you will be over ranked by the people that you were in charge of for the last year. Again, it was another unique situation. So what which, we which could have caused a lot of discord in the police department. Therefore, we went ahead with the swearing into the police chief. Okay, I guess if you want to blame somebody for it, go ahead and blame me. Okay, but Good. right now we have what we have. And here we are, we have two professionals that are ready to do the job, that are being paid less than their predecessors even at the end of their, the raises in this pay schedule. I guarantee you that these individuals, these chiefs, will be accountable for the performance of their departments because they answer to me. Now, if we're going to kick their salaries around through committees for another month, you as a council can go ahead and do that. But we are where we are. So if I understand the procedure, we have the Police and Fire Commission, Human Resource Director, Salary and Grievance, and finally it comes to the council. Correct. And that's the way it would always work. That's the way it's always worked. Can it be changed? Anything can be changed. Oh. <laughs> but, but except for the hiring by the Police and Fire Commission. Well, to say the least, I'm very disappointed in how the system works. Well, that's, that's, the, way, that's the way the system is. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we had some unique circumstances. Um, and a lot of this was the uh, timing by the Police and Fire Commission. I hate to say it, but that's... The, the, police, the fire chief was hired uh, very quickly, and the police chief took a, a year. So that's, that's where we are. Uh, that's what we have. Those are the cards we're dealt right now. And here we are. Under further discussion, Alder Person Um Thank you, Mayor. I don't want to belabor this anymore. I do think that the fact that these uh, chiefs are under what their predecessors finished at is okay. I think that's part of when you change over. People have to prove their experience and have to come on the job and function and show that they are worth uh, a higher salary. Um, and I think that's part of this probationary period. So I'm not ashamed of that at all. Thank you. Alderman Bob. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just so your phone doesn't start ringing off the hook tomorrow, I'm going to try and help you out. Uh, you misspoke and said that we had approved your table of organization. Uh, just for the people out in TV land, what we did was accept that diagram with thanks, but we didn't approve anything. Right. So uh, that's that. Um, I would offer that I, I suspect what happened, and I echo uh, Alderman Bauer's disappointment, everybody's disappointment. There was a disappointing lack of communication between the Police and Fire Commission and our, um, and our uh, HR director and the salary and grievance committee. That's what has caused this sort of backward approval of salary. Um, and it is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, my, my good friend and colleague, Alderperson uh, Chairman President Gisha, uh, worries that this controversy, I think, may make Sheboygan look a little uh, disorganized and unprofessional to the outside people looking in on this process. He even used the term unseemly. I think he's uncomfortable talking about people's pay in public. Um, I would suggest that like Alderperson Kleinus, the fact that they're making less than their predecessors is absolutely appropriate. They're, on, they're freshmen. They're great chiefs, they're noble, decent guys, but they're untested, they're freshmen. They should be earning a lot less than an outgoing, top of the, top of the earning uh, curve, outgoing chief. Um, what's unseemly in my mind are the comparables we use. The comparables are what the comparables are, but for those comparables to be so disconnected from the economic reality of what's going on in the state of Wisconsin, 
It's really unfortunate, and that's rooted in what is truly unseemly about this whole process, which is that it is connected to a self-inflating pay and benefit cycle that begins the first time they're a, a, a represented fireman. For the, for the entire career in the fire department, uh, you have a self-inflating pay and benefit cycle uh, that culminates in certain expectations uh, when you become chief, uh, certain senses of entitlement to certain pay and stuff. So um, I, I think this is a robust debate. I think it's handled completely backwards, but the conversation that Alderperson Bourne has brought up and many other good people here, uh, the way these, the, the, these pay scales are, I don't think it's unseemly to talk about it. I'm going to vote against them. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, any further discussion? If there is none, uh, we are voting on 20-62. Roll call, please. And this is the ordinance as amended, taking out that non-rep part. Okay. Boren. No. Bulk. Just to be clear, this is voting on this the is police chief. Not on the amendment, but on the amended document. This is on the amended document. The amended document. No. no. Bowers. No. Decker. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, no. Koff, Aye. I'm sorry, Aye. thank you, Kittleson, Clayunis, Montemayor, Rinflesh, no. Surik, Vu, no. and Wangaman. No. Eight eyes, seven no's. Motion carries. 20-63, General Ordinance Number 52-09-10 by all the persons Heidemann, Kittleson, Bout, Gisha, and Koth establishing the salary for the promoted fire chief. Alderman Heidemann. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the General Ordinance be put upon its passage. <clears throat> Again, this. Motion in the second under discussion. This, again, this ordinance has to do with the, the compensation for the fire chief. And, and, and I will be amending it the same as the other resolution. You have an amendment same as the other yeah, resolution? It's 2062, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Deleting that portion of section number one. Very good. Can we get a vote on that always? Um, them. On the amendment <coughs> only? Yeah. Everybody know what we're doing on the amendment, yeah. taking out that one right. part? Taking out the, the first line, same as the other? On the amendment only, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The document is amended. All the person Heidemann? Vice yes. President Heidemann? I move that uh, the general ordinance be put upon a passage as amended. Second. As amended, under discussion. If there is no discussion, no. roll call please. Uh, Balk? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Surik? Aye. Vu? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Eight eyes, seven no's. A real nail biter. Motion carries. Before you go on, can I? Uh, yes, uh, Sue would like to. I think I need to interrupt here after Alderman Balk's comment. You, if, could we go back to 2124, please? 2124 is regarding the table of organization. Alderman Balk, um, when the motion to accept and file, I am under the impression that the council is accepting and filing, and this is in place, and we're waiting for the job descriptions. Now, if that's not correct, we need to go after this again. That would be how I would take what the council did. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do now, but I didn't then. Did the body believe that we were approving that new table of organization? Uh, that's where I'm asking the question. I, I need to know that because an accept and file. consideration that's possible on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would the procedure be for that? We need a motion to reconsider that document. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to reconsider 21 24 by the city clerk submitting the mayor's proposed table of organization for the city of Sheboygan. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. Sir. Thank you. 
Um, Alderman Sirk? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I would, when we initially talked about this, I, I was planning to ask that we held the document until it had gone through, the job description had gone through salary and grievance and had gone through the regular procedures and then bring it back to council at the time. That was my original thought when we were, we were discussing this issue. Thank you. So I moved to hold. The table of organization has been, Steve, Steve would like to speak. Uh, this isn't on the reconsideration, but it is on the table of organization. Uh, all that is is a chart in my view. That's not the table of organization. That needs to be done by general ordinance. There needs to be a textual document coming in. Uh, and if it's patterned off of the chart, that's, that's fine. I think that's what you're talking about doing. But that changes the table of organization, where you delete this position, create this position, amend that position, uh, create this position with these job descriptions. That is the formal change to the table of organization. Anything short of that is not a formal change of the table of organization. It's some sort of uh, expression of intent from the council that this is kind of how you want to go, and, and the formal document is going to have to follow. Alderman Sirk, you're still on. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I would still move the whole. I'd like to see this, this whole issue come to the council as a, as a package, you know, with completed job descriptions, with salary ranges, uh, reporting responsibilities and duties. And then we look at it as a package. Right now, it seems to me we've got, we've got part of the answer, but not the whole answer. So I would still move to hold. Thank you. We have a motion to hold. I would like to vote on reconsideration. Need to vote to reconsider um, first, yeah. Yeah, we'd have a, yeah. <laughs> a vote on reconsideration. You know, in my opinion, uh, this thing has been kicked around now. I think it was at the Committee of the Whole back at the beginning of October. Um, we're into February. And it seems that everything, every time this thing comes forward, somebody wants to send it to another committee, put it on hold, or send it in a different direction. Um, we also, uh, on, the, on the positions, the three positions, um, the job descriptions and the salaries are in salary and grievances. They're in salary and grievances right now. They've been uh, in salary and grievances, I believe, coming up on the third meeting. Um, on the, uh, also, we have uh, now the Government Structure Committee who wants to uh, uh, discuss the Chief Operations Officer salary and job requirements in the Government Structure Committee. Um, what this has to do with the Government Structure Committee is a mystery to me. Uh, what I'm seeing here is a pattern of let's just keep sending this thing around in circles. Um, and truthfully, I'm getting rather frustrated with the whole thing, but I'm not giving up on it. I've been working on it for six months, and I'm going to keep going at it. This is basically, as Attorney McLean said, um, not an approval, not changing the table of organization. It's introducing the chart. And if we're going to continue to send this thing from committee to committee and put it on hold and hold and hold, we're never going to get a thing done in this city. So on reconsidering the vote, um, we have a, did we have a motion to reconsider? We did. Yes. And a second? second? Discussion on reconsidering the vote only. Okay. Alder Purse reconsidering the vote only? Yes. President Gish on reconsidering the vote? Yes. Uh, based on uh, the, what Steve, what Attorney McLean said, uh, it's kind of a moot point to reconsider. Uh, the vote if in fact it has to come through in a general ordinance anyway. Uh, uh, I agree that I think the vote of the council was giving uh, direction. That they've looked at this chart, they understand the chart, uh, nobody voted against it. So that kind of gives a signal to put in the rest of the work. And that is completing the job descriptions, completing the work from the uh, Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee, completing the work in salary and grievance. If the council would have voted no on it, I know I don't want to spend a bunch of more time and a bunch more committee time and many more evenings or daytime meetings or whatever it is rewriting job descriptions and things like that. So if the intent of the council was to give uh, uh, a tacit nudge, however Steve McLean uh, put it, 
move forward, then there really is no need to recon do reconciliation. And Sue, I see you're nodding. Uh, reconsideration because we're doing just that. So it will come back to the committee with job descriptions as Alderman Surik suggested. Correct. Uh, um, just the only reason I brought it up is because after you said that, it just set up a flag for me saying there's some confusion as to what we just did. I just wanted to make sure that everybody's clear. And Attorney McLean is absolutely right. It can't, this is the concept. It's got to be changed by ordinance. It has to be. So, Can I, can I make clear also that um, all committee meetings are, are open to all aldermen and the public? Uh, when these issues are discussed in committee meetings, it's not just the people that are on the committee um, that are there to discuss it. It's, it is, committee meetings are open to all members of the council and the public. And, and for people to, to jump in after the fact with their billion questions when they don't attend the committee meetings where this is being discussed in detail um, and, uh, is disheartening sometimes. Alderperson Montemayor. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I also thought we were accepting this chart, as it says, submitting the mayor's proposed table of organization for the city of Sheboygan. We're accepting the chart, not the action of doing it yet. Accepting Correct. the chart. Right. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. <coughs> Alderman Bowers. Well, I'm more mixed up now than when we started, but anyway, <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to, like Alderman Zurich said, have it in, in place so we don't have another fire chief, police chief situation. I, I think it's a good idea. Now, if we're just passing something of a chart, that's one thing, but that seems like to me you're putting one foot in the door. Why not have a complete document in front of us so that we can act on this? And as far as attending all these meetings, uh, I myself, can attend a lot more, but a lot of these people work, and they can't attend every meeting that there is. And believe me, there are a lot of meetings in this this city. Um, next, we have Alderman Bulk. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, uh, just to be clear, my intention is not to frustrate you or this process or anything. I appreciate uh, your clarification, Sue. Um, and if uh, through Attorney McLean and uh, President Gisha, if what President Gisha said is true, and I think he's right, if this was a tacit n nudge that says we are interested in learning more, then I would withdraw my, uh, my motion to reconsider. I was just, based on Sue's coaching, I was afraid we may have approved more than what I thought we approved. But it sounds like after this conversation we didn't. So uh, I withdraw my motion to reconsider. Thank you, Alderman Baup. We need the second withdrawn. Do we too. have a second? second? We have a second on the withdrawn. Well, we never had a vote on withdrawing. No. Okay, so now we are uh, just back where we are. Alderperson Kittleson? Yeah, I, just, it's, I, I wonder, you know, what, what are we reconsidering? You know, and where You're not. He so withdrew. withdrawn. I think withdrawn now. <laughs> uh, Alderman Surik? Yeah, just a comment to mention about I, I have gone to these meetings, sorry, agreements meeting. Yes. And this, Quite frankly, the Salary Agreements Committee has not agreed to what the job descriptions say, what the requirements are, or who's reporting to what. I mean, to me, we're still in the middle of, of assessing this thing. And, I, and I, mm -hmm. I really like to emphasize that that things begin in these committees, like salary agreements. And once they're, they're solidified in salary agreements, then they're brought to the council with a nice, clear explanation and recommendation. I don't think we have that yet. Right. And I, I think that before we approve or even accept the organization as it stands, we need the background as to what we're really accepting. Thank you. Yeah, the the, the uh, chart itself did not come out of uh, salary and grievances. It came out of the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Wow. Alderman Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my impression was because it was submitted um, to the city's way, and, uh, and just from the city clerk, that this was the chart that salary and grievances could then continue to discuss and create job descriptions for this one. And I think it is worth noting that 15 of us said, keep going. Um, I know it's getting frustrated, but the, you know it's pretty unanimous. It says we're still very interested in hearing what the plan is. Let's keep let's keep pushing on. So my hope was that I actually took it as a strong recommendation of support to keep moving forward. I did not realize that it would become in, in this sense the, a bigger issue than it should have been. Um, but we're, we're interested in hearing that more and keep keep moving. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Wolfflesh. One light left, President Gesha. Thank you. I. I probably could have made myself a little clearer earlier. 
Uh, I agree with Alderman Surik that, that uh, it's time for Celery and Grievance to do its work. It has been. Celery and Grievance has already started this process. Uh, Celery and Grievance didn't have to create from scratch the job descriptions. The Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee made job description recommendations. Then they went to Salary and Grievance for changes to be made. What will come out of Salary and Grievance with general ordinance, etc., is specific pay, specific duties, the reporting has all been worked out. Uh, uh, Clerk Richards is nodding her head. That was one of the things we had a tremendous amount of discussions about. It should be very clear. Had great input from Alderperson Kittleson on the structure of the job description so that you can match them up real nice and easy. The actual duties uh, are, are, are spelled out very clearly. It's some of the better job descriptions uh, coming out of HR that I've seen. So it will come in as a package. It, there will be no ambiguity regarding structure of pay and all that. It'll be all nice and neat and clear. The only thing I ask is, and I appreciate Alderman Reinflesch's comments uh, regarding um, keep the process going that should be viewed as that, is just that. There's six months worth of work minimum in this process. If you have concerns, if you have um, problems with the concept, let them be heard. Because the vote unanimous earlier was not was was doing just as Alderman Reinflesch suggested, um, the knights working on job descriptions, the reworking of stuff through salary and grievance, the working up of these charts, the dozens of meetings having to do with this this structure, um, and there's more of that to go on. So if you have some comments that would cause us to pause, please do because because uh, it, there's a lot of work yet to be done on that. So. We're, I guess we're, we're taking the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee and I think the mayor and other members of the uh, Seller and Grievance is taking this as being just that. Uh, let's see a complete package because we are interested. Because if you're not, let, uh, let us know. Thank you, President Gisha. Okay, I don't think we had anything to vote on there. Nope. Very good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lively discussion, Audle, nonetheless. Uh, other matters, Attorney McLean. 2151 is a communication from Keith Bruner requesting removal of the one-way sign on the east side of the corner at New York Avenue and North 5th Street because of safety concerns. That will go to public protection and safety. 2152 is an RO by the Board of Contractors Examiners uh, submitting applications for building contractors license already granted. Uh, that will go to, oh, that will lie over. 2153 is submitting a claim from Blue Harbor Resort Sheboygan <coughs> LLC for excessive assessment. Risk management. 2154 is submitting 64 claims from Blue Harbor condominium owners for excessive assessment. Risk management. 2155 is submitting a claim from Jay Mackey for alleged damages to his vehicle when a city garbage truck struck his car, knocking off the driver's side mirror. And that will be referred to risk management. 2156 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2010 and June 30, 2011. And that will go to Alderman Boren and his Law and Licensing Committee. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to adjourning the night? I don't think so. I think we're adjourned. Thank you.